Hi everyone, this is just one of the cards that we're going to make for this month's club card kit. This is Amanda with Crafting with Amanda and if you haven't already subscribed, please do. So when you opened your envelope for me, this is what you saw, two card bases, enough uh, leaves for both kits, the butterflies were already embossed with uh, sparkly powder and um, the two different I would call them peony or roses um, kind of bouquets. So I'm just jumping right in here with the coloring and you can color these however you want. You can use markers, you can use um, colored pencils, you could even use watercolor paints if you wanted. Um, I did one previously with all shimmer brush. I only did shimmer brush and that went quick and it was fun too. So you have lots of options for how you want to color these in. Just have fun with it. So I am using the Tri-Blend markers that we sell, and this is just the blue one. And I kind of am falling in love with these. I can't believe I'm going to say that. <laughs> but the blending and the choices are just easy. So you start, and well, how I do is I start with just a, a solid base of the light color. And you work in small sections and then you go back with the darker and the medium shades to kind of do your edges. And then at the very end, go back over everything again with a dark, with the light color again. You can see I'm doing that same thing with the green. I start with a light color and then I go back and add your medium and dark tones and then just kind of coat the whole thing again with the light shade. The other nice thing about these markers, and I think why I like them so much, is you don't need to have all the colors. You can really get a great result with just a few basic colors. So now I'm going back in with the gold shimmer brush, and I just kind of dotted all of the little stamen centers of the flowers. So, and I started to do the outline of the blue with the blue um, sapphire shimmer brush and it's about this time that I'm kind of maybe regretting my decision to do this but you know I had gone this far it was just time by the time I got to the end I really loved it but when I first started I was like oh what am I doing so that's what's going on here and then this is just the end of the red one and I'm again just doing the shimmer brush and the red shimmer brush just it's beautiful it just really highlighted stuff so I liked that now um, the girls in the club you guys don't have to do these card bases but if you want to make your own I went ahead and um, made the sample so that you would know so your base sheet or your card base is eight inches by four and a quarter or the ones you have are four inches because I wanted to get three bases out of one 12 by 12 sheet but you can do eight inches by four and a quarter so with the eight inch side on your scoreboard couldn't think of the word of that you're gonna score at one and a quarter and two and a half and then I turn it around and score at one and a quarter and two and a half and the reason why I do that is I find if I do one and a quarter, two and a half, and then go out to, you know, six and a half and um, five and a quarter, that they don't always fold even. Where if I do one and a quarter, two and a half from, you know, both sides, I tend to not make mistakes and it just works out very evenly. So, and you're gonna fold the, the bigger flap to the center and then fold, you know, counter fan fold back the edge. And if you don't fold it this way the first time, that's fine. Um, all of your cards came with one two and a half inch score already on it, just so I could fit them in the envelope. But this just allows you to see the um, the frame of what the bridge cards are going to be. And then again, I just used there was a four by four inch scrap from each of the wood grain twelve by twelve sheets that I cut excuse me um so i'm just using those to cover the base of my cards use about the scraps and again you wouldn't have to do that but if you did want to make your own card this is how you would do that so that kind of gives you the idea of what the bridge looks like and now i'm just going to go through these four by four squares and pick some um 
wood grains that are kind of going to work together and it was funny I thought oh this will be just easy and I'll pick it it seemed to take me longer to figure it out than I think it really should have but that's okay um, and then I marked where that center so that I can cut the piece to cover the the main background of the card and I did that because I didn't want um, to have it be too wide I wanted to make sure that it would fold and fit inside the actual back of the card. And now I'm auditioning some more wood grain patterns to see what's going to work and what tones I like or don't like. And like I said, um, it's kind of nice if you just have one piece as your card base because then you eliminate all of these steps. So there we go. I like the dark it has some of that gray tone that that center has but because it's the sides I think they're just gonna disappear and then I found my base for the second card and this one has the warm tones of the wood along with some of those gray or weathered barn tones this is a little lighter and I think I like that even better so that's what I'm gonna use and these I'm cutting basically just shy of an inch and a quarter um, again just to make sure that it folds correctly and I'm going to um, ink all of the the seams the joints the the edges I'll call them so everything will will have a nice finish but I'm just bringing it in just shy of one quarter and they're four inches tall as I said so this one you're gonna see I um, ended up cutting the side panels at just under one and a quarter. I did two of those so that they just kind of continue because I had two of these sheets or two of these four by four pieces and then I used the smaller planks for the center and I end up having to trim it down because I used the measurement for the cut and um, needed to just trim off a little bit more. So, so there I have my edges done and then I'm gonna measure and okay it's right around three inches so I cut it right at three inches and really it needs to be two and seven eighths is what you should cut it so that it folds correctly because when I try to fold it it's bending the one side so bring it back over trim it off and there we go so now all of that will fit and this is why we dry fit things right ladies I really like that top card it's funny I don't know why I chose not to assemble that one um, versus the I, I don't know I think sometimes I like a challenge <laughs> or to make sure that I can do the hard one and leave the easy one for when we have our zoom meeting on Thursday so now I'm going to get out ink and I think I get out um, nutmeg and it has a green cast to it when it goes on but I can assure you in real life um, it is not it the next morning it dries with a pure brown than what's showing today and I'm gonna get started and then I crank up the video into super fast mode and you know we got this puppy done so there we go that what it kind of feels like when you're going this fast through the videos and I just made sure to fold back all of the folds forward and backwards and so that I got both sides now you're dry fitting and you're not even gonna see those folds when you get it all glued together so quick assembly and again I just I fold it when um, every time I glue something down just to make sure that it's gonna it's on there correctly and I really like how that base turned out. So now I'm auditioning between the darker wood grains and the lighter wood grains of do I want the blue on this one or the red on this one? And I go back and forth for a little bit and then ta-da, I make my decision. So if you have an opinion, you can now, you know, know what to do for your cards because <laughs> I made my own decision. And then I'm going to jump over here. I found this hello in just one of the stamp sets that I had here access to in the house. As you know, I don't have access to much of my stuff with it, with the construction and everything in the garage.
but um, I'm just going to tone down this whole hello and I wanted to make sure that the color is something that I wanted to do so I was just testing it on the back and then like I said I'm just toning down this hello there is if you happen to be a, a subscription member for the cards there's a great hello image in there I don't remember what it says for sure I think I have that stamp set right here Oh, it says hello there and it's in a script and it's the perfect size so it would work too. All right, so now you know how to dry emboss and shape some of these leaves. Just take your embossing stylus and this is the back of my Versa mat and or you can use just foam, you know. And we're just kind of pushing the steel ball that's at the end of the stylus and curving the leaves to just give them a little dimension. I was talking, I'm guessing, to a kid right there, so this process, it's kind of funny. I, I stop and talk and, and then get back to work and then they come in again. So, And you're going to do that to all the leaves. I'm trying to skip through this because you guys can pause the video if you need to. And again, I'm guessing here that I'm having a conversation with a ch kid. <laughs> and I thought I had edited this part out, but apparently I had not. So this is where I'm just trying to figure out where, how I want to place my flower and it just needs to be attached to both edges and you can tilt it however you want. Um, the blue one has a more flat bottom. This one, you, like I said, you can um, put more leaf on or less. It really doesn't take much to get it to stick. So. I just take this uh, score tape and rip off some pieces and put it just on the edges of the leaves. And I think here is when I realize, no, I really need a triangle. So I go ahead and just cut this from one corner to the other to get some nice points for um, sticking to the back of the rose. And I apologize that I'm off screen there. We've been bumped in and out of our my studio and I've been on a card table in the bedroom with Gerald. and. So I, it's just, I, I do apologize that I'm more off screen doing some of this than I really wanted to be. But we will eventually have a kitchen and two baths and flooring and <laughs> no holes in the wall and hopefully a studio that I can begin to set up and be more stable <laughs> in. <laughs> so I'm just taking the paper tape off the back of the score tape and then I will make sure that it is adhered just to the one side so you flatten it out because this is what allows it to mail in a standard envelope and again I'm totally off screen but what happens is you end up flipping that image you can flip it over like if you opened it to the right based on what you see here now the flower is upside down and then you can add your little bit of glue and I just turned it so that I had more access and you know apparently so that I would be completely off camera so again you just hold it flat so that the flower part the front of your card um, lays flat for mailing and after you get it adhered and I get this paper off because apparently um, the paper is winning at this point. <laughs> um, I will make sure that there is not going to be any glue onto the side walls of the bridge card. And it looks like we did a pretty good job there because it's standing up. Not that you can see it yet, but you will. So there it is. Yay! <laughs> Um, and I, I love just the richness of this, just like that. It, you know, you could just do something just like that. So then this is the butterfly and in the, my original card, I had tucked it down inside, but my greeting I think was a little smaller. And, um, so before I decided where to put it, I'm like, Oh, I need a color for this. And I was thinking purple because I did some purple berries next to the red, but then I was afraid it would be a little too, um, hard to see with the wood grain and long story short purple it is <laughs> and you turn your vellum butterfly over and just color the background and it's that simple and it's so forgiving um just 
color it in. The embossing lines that are on the front with the glitter will still be there because you're not doing anything to cover those at all. And this is just the easiest, so easy to, to get this wow. And this is butterfly is from the Chelsea Gardens card making kit that a lot of us did years and years ago. And I just uploaded the, the stamped image so that the Cricut would fussy cut the outside for me. And then I was able to use the stamp and just stamp over it with the um, Versa, Versa Mark ink and add the it's holographic embossing powder by Ranger. It's something that I've just had in my stash. And you see them, well, you can't see, but under my fingers, I'm trying to, to see if it'll fit somewhere in the bottom. I knew that I had a quarter inch of height to play with and could I do it on top of the sentiment? And instead it's just to the right edge there. And I really like how that turned out. So my score tape is uh, too wide for the center of the butterfly because I only want to adhere this to the body of the butterfly. You just pop that on the back, peel the tape off, and then put your butterfly down. And I did use like my thumbnail to kind of crease the butterfly and a slight arch so it wasn't just a flat um, straight fold on that butterfly but because vellum is kind of plasticky once you bend it it remembers the bend so even going through the mail without any kind of support underneath that butterfly it should pop up for the recipient so and then just go ahead and add these leaves however you want to add them um, what works for you, what you think you like. In hindsight, I would grab some sequins. I don't think I did it at the time I made this card. I think I did it on the blue one, but um, grab some sequins that you can also dot in onto your card. And I think I was holding that off screen because I was yep, grabbing my reverse tweezers to, to help hold the glue so I can do something else and I wish I had like two or three pair of these reverse tweezers because they're just great and with the cardstock being two-toned you can add light and dark tones of your different leaf shapes as you want it's whatever works for you and it really doesn't like this little stem that's in there that's all that you need to get this to hold on the card. You don't have to have a leaf glued down or anything else. It'll, it'll just be on there very nicely. So now I'm going to tuck this one in on the other side. And look, I'm off screen again. Hmm, imagine that. I apologize. But I just love how this is coming to life. It is just um, adding those leaves in there. It just kind of pops it out. It just, I really like that. And I could see, I, I realized later, I actually realized with the Craft With Heart cards that one of the things I should have added was some gold leaves or gold fronds because that would have just really popped. But I like the green. I think for fall it works really well. Um, but feel free if you have, you know, a punch with some delicate leaves or a dye with some leaves, go ahead and cut them out or the Cricut. I think I used Art Philosophy leaves for this one. It might have been Artistry. Um, but just cut out some leaves with the gold. And this is the final card. I didn't put the blue one together yet, but I just, I really like how that turned out. Please remember to subscribe. Have a great day. Thank you.